Hey guys, Dan Ballard, pro travel and landscape photographer. We were up here shooting in Banff and uh, BC before that, trying to uh, get some landscape photos. Just want to talk to you guys today a little bit about kind of my process or kind of the method that I use, uh, kind of, you know, for finding great images. So the first thing that I like to do is find a great background. I think that's kind of the, kind of the cornerstone, kind of the main thing uh, for really putting together a great landscape shot, or at least a certain type of landscape shot. Um, so to do that, the first thing you're going to want to do is kind of find an area to go to. Um, you can do that a lot of ways, of course, looking at photos online, um, but if you're looking for something completely original, um, maybe something that hasn't been shot all that much, then it's a little harder. But you're going to want to look for traveler photos, uh, spend a lot of time looking at topo maps, uh, spend a lot of time on Google Earth. You know, you can really use a lot of these methods to kind of get a, a rough idea of what an area is going to look like. You know, is it mountainous? Are there jagged peaks? You know, are there sea stacks? You know, it kind of gives you a rough idea of, okay, is this area, does it have potential? Uh, is it someplace that I want to go? You know, looking at Ethiopia, for example, you know, I was looking at, you know, a lot of photos, looking for backgrounds, all these different things, uh, and then finally decided to go there based on those things. Um, once you decide where you're going to go, that's when you can get a little bit more, you know, in depth with your research, you know, really looking for an exact spot on your topo map or an exact set of peaks, uh, you know, on Google Maps. This shot here was a great example of that, uh, where I basically just, you know, used topo maps uh, along with Google Earth to find pretty much really close to the exact spot that I wanted to shoot. Okay, so you've got to get a background picked out. You kind of know the area you're going. Uh, once you get there, that's when you really just start exploring. You know, spend a lot of time driving around the area, hiking around the area, you know, just really looking for that, you know, that background piece. Keep in mind that as you move around, the angles are going to change. Um, you know, the height, the, the, the levels, all of that stuff is gonna, the, the, the perspective, all of that stuff is gonna change as you move around and as you change position. So make sure that you're really paying attention to that and really aware. Next step is basically finding a good foreground to go with that. So basically you're doing the same thing. You've kind of got the, the background in, in place. Usually at this point it's on foot, possibly you're still driving, uh, but you're looking for something that's gonna go with that background really well. So for example, say you're in Iceland, you're driving through the countryside, you kind of have you know, known from your research that there's you know, a really cool peak out there. Uh, then you're maybe looking for a waterfall, for example. You know, or a stream or something like that. Here in Banff, uh, I've been eyeing this peak for a while, um, and then I knew there was a stream out here from maps. So we snowshoed out this morning and, uh, you know, found, luckily, super luckily, uh, we found a little bit of open, uh, open water that wasn't all in snow, and then had a foreground for my background. So anything of interest can potentially be a foreground. So, you know, again, some kind of a stream or, you know, a crack or any kind of leading line or flowers or, you know, just anything that's really strong and really interesting. Um, preferably something that goes really well with the background also. So many times when you're looking for that foreground area or kind of once you've basically found it and you're actually shooting it, uh, you have to sometimes get into some pretty, you know, interesting positions uh, to try to get the perspective you want. A shot like this, for example, I was, you know, incredibly low. I was actually in the water, so, you know, of course, quite cold. Um, in the water, you know, super low, changing my positions, uh, you know, going, getting up higher at certain times. You never know. Just really pay attention and be aware that your movement and your body position is really going to be a really important factor in you know, getting a good shot and getting an original creative shot as well. So, okay, you've got those two things. You've got a great background. You've continued to explore. You've found a really cool solid foreground. Perfect. Next step is actually dialing in your composition. Now I'm not going to go into that a lot right now. I'm going to do a separate video just on, you know, just on composition and, and design and kind of fine tuning things. But for right now, the next thing you're looking for um, is simplicity, is a simple area around or in between your foreground and your background. So that's why again in the first video, that simplicity video, I talked about that. I talked about finding, you know, main subjects. We're basically just taking this a step further. We found a great background, we found a great foreground, and now we're just trying to make sure that the area between is really simple, 
and then it allows the eye space to move around. It's basically our negative space. Again, we'll go into that in more depth. Of course, all of this is, you know, it really based on finding good light. Um, even if you do all this stuff, even if you come out here, uh, you know, find something great and the light's not good, you're probably not gonna necessarily get a photo. Um, but this gives you something to go for and something to look for. Uh, and this really gives you kind of an option to at least have, have a plan. <laughs> uh, you can show up someplace like Banff National Park and, and know what your goal is. Know that you're out there looking for this great jagged sharp peak and then you're looking for you know a great stream or a great set of trees or something really interesting to go in front of it and then you're looking for something that allows the item to move in between the two. All right, so this is kind of a perfect example here. Um, the big peak that you see behind me, um, I saw that just driving on the road. Um, we were just out scouting, driving around. Uh, I spent a lot of time in this area, we're not too far from Lake Louise. So I kind of have an idea of the area, but a lot of roads that I haven't been on, a lot of areas I haven't explored. So we were just driving around, just kind of exploring, and I came around the bend, you know, saw this you know, big peak, just kind of the top of it, um, you know, from the window. Okay, perfect, that's the background. So again, first step. Then, um, just a few minutes later, I saw on the other side of the highway, it was kind of this little area where there was, you know, was uh, little ponds, kind of a little river. So, ah, okay, you know, there's, you know, a possible um, foreground, at least something to explore. So I found a little pull off, hiked off, you know, out beside the road, looked at that, didn't find anything that really worked, hiked through the woods just a little bit, it was pretty close to the road, uh, and then saw where the river was, that maybe if we were on the other side of the river, that, hey, you know, maybe from over there, uh, that could be a shot. So, got out the topo map, looked at the map, sure enough, there's a little road that goes over there, so drove around, walked up the road, got on the other side of the river. Sure enough, we have a really nice peak, uh, and then you know lots of options for foregrounds, um, you know, with the river. Now I don't know how this shot's going to come out yet. The peak isn't ideal. Uh, the balance might not be quite right. Um, but if we get really good light, then uh, you know might be a, a decent image. So now that we're out here, uh, again we've got our background. We knew this area had a good foreground. Now we're actually starting to look for you know the actual precise. Thing that we're going to use in the foreground. In this case, I found these kind of you know two lines leading in this little kind of broken section. It's really clean. It's really simple. Yet it's really strong. It pulls the eye in. Uh, potentially might make for a really cool foreground. Um, notice the background area is pretty simple. There's trees, but they're kind of in, in the distance. Um, you know the water is is clear. The snow is clean. You know basically everything in the shot is pretty clean and simple. All you really see is that kind of you know fairly interesting foreground and then a kind of a simple, clean middle ground, and then our nice peaks. So again, if we get some color, uh, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, then you know maybe we'll have a pretty good shot. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be, an, again, an award-winning, just absolutely amazing image, um, but it is original. I imagine it'd be somebody else who shot it, but I've at least never seen a photograph of it. Um, so again, lots of fun. Uh, it's just, just a blast out here trying to uh, kind of create something different, so. I'm definitely thinking about simplicity here, uh, just in the way I'm shooting this as well. And not only am I trying to keep my comp simple, uh, but I also just threw on a 10-stop uh, Singer Ray and D filter um, just to blur the you know the river and the water, and then also to blur the sky a little bit. So I'm doing a 30-second exposure. I'm gonna do the focus stacking, so focus once here at f/8, and then once on the peak at f/8. So by blurring the water, by getting some movement in the clouds, that'll just kind of make things even more clean and simple. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate it.